one of the important steps in breath meditation is to be able to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, the whole body as you breathe out. The Buddha in his 16 steps puts it as step number three. And John Lee in his seven steps puts it more toward the end as something you work up to. But either way, it's important. Otherwise, as the breath gets comfortable, and if your awareness gets very small, then you tend to either fall asleep or go into delusion concentration, where the mind is still, but it doesn't really know anything. Which is not what you want, because nothing gets accomplished by that kind of meditation. The problem is when you expand your awareness, sometimes there are things that get in the way. One is, especially if you're in the beginning stages of your meditation, there seem to be just too many things going on in the body all at once. It gets distracting, which is why John Lee says, first you focus on one spot. Get that one spot established. Then you think about going through the different parts of the body, and you don't do the whole body all at once. You do things section by section. Just to acquaint yourself with how the breathing feels in the different parts of the body, and to see if you can make adjustments. This is where you sometimes run into the second obstacle, which are parts of the body that are very tense or in pain and there's nothing that you can seem to do about them. So you have to learn how to work around them. Find another part of the body where you can get some good breath energy. Don't go diving right into the difficult parts right at first. There's a part of the mind that's kind of like a vacuum cleaner. It picks up all the dirt first before it picks up anything else and gets drawn to problems. But if you're going to solve the problem, you need to have some strength on your side. You need to have some allies on your side. So focus first on the parts of the body that at least feel okay. And be very determined that you're going to stay with them. As for the parts of the body that are tense or tight or just seem too solid. Leave them to the solidity, leave them to the pain, leave them to the tightness. You work on you work on your allies. Because as you focus on the other parts of the body, you do get a sense of what kind of breathing feels good. And what kind of adjustment is just right. So when you turn around and start thinking about looking into those tight or tense or solid parts of the body. You're coming from a position of sensitivity, and you're coming with good breath energy. If you're too determined to get rid of the tightness or the pain too quickly, the breath energy is going to turn on you, or you're going to distort it, and then everything gets all tangled. So acquaint yourself with the parts of the body that are okay, the parts that you tend not to pay attention to, and be very determined to stay with them. Learn how to protect that okayness, and then gradually work from that position of strength. And look into your perceptions. There's one perception that's very common, which is that when you're breathing, the parts that are tense or tight or painful tend to be the parts that you use a lot with your subconscious thoughts about what needs to be tightened up for the breath to come in, where it gets pulled in. So see if you can change those perceptions. Give the tight parts a holiday. 
tell yourself you're not going to breathe in until some other part of the body pitches in. And it will. And then learn how to perceive the solid parts as not quite so solid. There's space. After all, there's the body's made out of atoms, and atoms are mostly space anyhow. Space between the atoms, space inside the atoms. See if that perception helps to take away some of the solidity that seems to be getting in the way. You can also work on your posture. There's a lot of tension around the jaws or in the, around the skull. Often it's because there's something wrong with the, the way the breath is, the energy is flowing down in the base of the spine, or near the base of the spine, down in the lumbar region. So check that out. And again, check it out with the breath energy that is sensitive and calm and soothing. Here again, you want to be careful that you don't force things too much, or otherwise you can make your headache even worse. And then another perception you can work on is, where are you in your body? Here it's good to keep in mind a distinction that the Buddha makes between consciousness and attention. Consciousness is simply the receptive quality, in this case the body is receptive all over. When we talk about spreading your awareness to fill the body, actually that aspect of awareness is already there throughout the body. You could test it. You could, As John Swat said, you could take an iron spike and stick it in any part of the body and it would be sensitive to it. Your attention, however, tends to be lo more localized. That's where your desires are, that's where your interest is. And what you want to learn how to do is get more in touch with the consciousness side. So that the attention side is not so headstrong. Think of things dissolving back, back, back into the basic awareness that's already there throughout the body. That way you often find that the different parts of the body that seem to be out of joint get back in alignment. Then you're not so much in your head. So in one way it's a question of perceptions, how you perceive your awareness, how you perceive where you are, how you perceive the problem. And the other is learning some sensitivity to the parts of the body that already are functioning well. And exactly what kind of breathing is, is going on in those parts. So you can use that kind of breathing instead of your preconceived notion breathing, which is often aggravating the problem. So find your strengths. Find your allies, nurture your allies, gain some appreciation for them. And you begin to realize that the parts of the body that are not cooperative are not that not enemies so much. They're parts of the body that have been abused. And they're used to being abused by you, and so they, they tend to clam up. But if you begin to show some gentleness, show some sensitivity, and some patience, at the same time that you question your basic assumptions, question your basic perceptions, you find you have a whole range of tools. But here again, be careful. Don't think just because you have so many tools that the job will be done quickly. 
This is a meticulous job. As I've said in the past, it's like those prison breaks that you re see in movies where everything is very meticulously planned and they have to be very, very patient. If they get impatient, they reveal themselves and then the prison break is, is off. But if they can maintain their patience, they can get out. So here, bring a lot of patience to your meditation. This doesn't mean just sitting there. It means realizing you have meticulous work you've got to do, and do it very carefully, very patiently. You're working with your perceptions. These can be very subtle. You're working with the energies in the body. These can be subtle. John Fuhr made the comment one time that it's often said that breath meditation is appropriate for everybody. He said it's not the case. It requires some refinement. People are insensitive in their approach to the body, insensitive in their approach to the mind. We'll see nothing but in and out, in and out, and a fair amount of pain in the body. If you bring some sensitivity, if you bring some finesse, and a willingness to look for subtleties, then everything can open up. <laughs>